One day it's spring, one day it's winter, we're sort of in between. And I do have to thank Jennifer Daw for making our gardening segments happen when we couldn't get together safely when it was so cold. But it's nice and sunny today. We're looking for signs of life, and that means we're talking about birds, bees, and bugs. Birds will soon be returning to your garden, and our full-time resident birds will soon be making their nests. So make sure you've provided them a fresh bird bath to welcome them home. Any day now, I expect to see some bees scouting around for early flowers. Better hold on for a couple days, bees. But honeybees are not the only game in town. Don't forget our native mason bees. They're not as large as honeybees. They're about half the size. They're very docile, but they're very productive in pollinating vegetables and flowers. So you can get a starter kit if you want. They nest in these little tubes and you can have your own mason bee colony. Mason bees are not the only solitary bee in your garden. Leaf cutter bees are another excellent pollinator and you'll want to start setting out houses for them now. There's many different decorative options and all these little holes will be places that they can set up a showing before they move in. Directly beneath me, there are little white grubs, smaller than peanuts, that are eating the roots of my lawn. I'm not happy about this. These are the larvae of Japanese beetles. Stop it! Grubs aren't dumb. They have burrowed beneath the frost line so the winter cold can't kill them. Your best option is to apply a grub killer to your lawn in March and April. Go to your local garden center and seek out their expertise because there are a lot of organic and synthetic options on the market. And now people, the battle begins. <laughs>